Well, now that the 2009 award season has started in Hollywood, can this year's box office successes compete with the iconic films of the past? We are joined by Graydon Carter, editor of Vanity Fair's Tales of Hollywood, Rebels, Reds, and Graduates, and the wild stories behind the making of 13 iconic films. Graydon, good morning. Good morning, Julie. We want the wild stories, and we want the scandalous <laughs> ones. Probably the most scandalous movie you feature in your book is Cleopatra. Well, it was an amazing film, and it was, uh, it was just about bankrupted a studio, 20th Century Fox. They built two entire sets. Um, one in England and one in, uh, in Rome uh, for the movie. It took two years to make. Why did uh, they build two entire sets? Because sentences? the first one they built, they built it in England and it rained all the time, so they moved it to Rome. Uh -huh. Then you have, you have um, uh, it cost, you know, it cost uh, $44 million, which is real money in those days. You had a huge, like, um, um, romance between the two stars that when they would go to Rome, it would virtually started the paparazzi uh, um, uh, sort of movement. Um, uh, You're talking about Richard Burton and, and Elizabeth Taylor, and both were married to other people. At both the time? married, and they became the most famously sort of adulterous couple in the world at that time, at a time when this was a you know a really shunned upon thing, and it was just an you know it it, uh, it cost so much money. But if you actually go back and look at the movie, the movie's kind of fantastic. Yeah, and it, it, it made its money back over over time, but it it, uh, it just about killed the people making it. Man Joe Mankiewicz, who directed, he said it was the toughest three pictures he ever made. Why? Why? Because of all these. It was just so much work. <laughs> How was Liz Taylor on the set? Well, in, uh, according to the story that David Camp wrote, I mean, she, um, you know, they had to work around her moods and around her um, her physical problems. She got pneumonia. She had a tracheotomy star scar. Um, she was uh, probably not the healthiest and easiest person to get along with. And didn't they also say that they had to shoot around her menstrual cycle? You're allowed to say that on morning TV? Yes. Oh, I said it that way. Okay. I mean, hey, yeah, okay. it's part of life. I guess so. I guess, um, yes, apparently. Why? Um, I have to be, it's, uh, you'd have to <laughs> you better than Are you very go on, move on. <laughs> Guys don't like this topic. No, well, I All right, who started the affair with who between Richard Burton and... Well, I think it probably uh, Richard Burton. I think he um, he thought this would be a good way to sort of liven up his, um, his his time away from home when he was on location. Wow! All right, let's talk about the Graduate. Mm. Give us some stories behind the Graduate. Like uh, the the original cast that they had in mind was not who we ended end up seeing. Is that true? Well, you had Gene Hackman was originally going to play Anne, Anne Bancroft's father, but uh, Mike Nichols thought he was too young. You mean young. Anne Bancroft's husband? Uh, Anne Bancroft's husband. Right. Sorry. Um, even though Anne, and Anne Bancroft was only a few years young, older than uh, Dustin Hoffman, they sort of dressed her old and predatory. And it was very funny because there's a thing in the book where Mike Nichols asks, uh, he wants to uh, uh, choose, uh, interview Redford for the part that Dustin Hoffman plays for Ben Braddock. And he asked him if he's ever been, you know, uh, score, uh, uh, turned down by a girl. And Re he, Robert Redford literally could not understand the concept of that. He said, <laughs> what do you mean? And so he realized he may not be right for this part. Wow, and originally they wanted um, Candy Bergen for? To play the, uh, the, the Catherine Ross part. She would have been great. She would have been great. Yeah. But they're, I mean, they're all great. They're all great, But it's yeah. just so weird to hear. And finally, in the final seconds, Saturday Night Fever. Right. They defined the 70s. What, give me some. Well, like so many of the, the, the movies we do, these, they're sort of iconic movies, and they help sort of define a decade. And, and uh, probably nothing defined um, the 70s as much as uh, Saturday Night Fever. And um, three of the stories also of the uh, movies also came from magazine articles. This one from a story about um, uh, from in New York Magazine by Nick Cohen. Wow, look at Dan look at Travolta move. And that's him. That is him. I'm telling you, this mm. book it's like this. <laughs> really? No way! Oh my goodness! Oh bless you. <laughs> Graydon Carter, thanks so much. Vanity Fair's Tales of Hollywood.